<laughs> All right. Hey, everyone. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome back to episode 10 of the Film Section Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Mark. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about, uh, I guess, I didn't think about it very much, but after the fact, this was kind of like a double feature. We each picked some slimy fucking New York <laughs> picture to fucking to review. Very similar in ways. I mean, definitely the the fucking setting, mm-hmm. and, uh, and an and an actor who knew, because <laughs> I didn't. I yeah. Some bit parts like it's until I see him that I'm like, oh yeah, that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but tonight's movie is Cruising uh, by <laughs> William Friedkin, who uh, directed The Exorcist. <laughs> Um, amongst other things, he did Exorcist three. I don't know why I can't recall any movie that is an Exorcist other than this that he directed. But that's uh, those are the facts they got. He did. Oh no, he did some shitty movie called The Guardian. I know that. Yeah, it was pretty shitty. I think I heard about that. What, the Guardian? Did that just come out like a couple of years ago? No, it's from like 1990. But I know what you're talking about. There was another movie that just came out recently called The Guardian. Yeah. Okay. Then I haven't seen the the original yeah. one. No. Um. <laughs> we got first. Okay. So this is weird. The weird. Uh. So last week we had De Niro. This is a Pacino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> That's so awesome. This is so awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> this movie's weird. In a good, in well, this movie's weird. <laughs> it's uh, it's Al Pacino. He uh, he goes. He he's asked to go undercover because there is a uh, serial killer killing people in the uh, gay community in New York City in 1980, late end of the 70s into the 80s. Uh, so he's asked to go undercover, and uh, so basically, as he, I mean, he has to blend in. And apparently, I mean, I, I was small, so there's no way I would see this kind of scene during this time. But from watching movies, it seems like gay people they they really enjoy leather. Um, they really like to look like a uh, Hitler henchman. They love hats. They like wearing like all these hats. All those hats. Those hats. Uh, but I. <laughs> uh, it's a crazy scene because apparently they have underground clubs that you have to know people to get into. Called like the cockpit. Yeah, the cockpit. <laughs> uh, there is wild shit going on in there. Uh, there is. There is some dick sucking all in the corners, shit. People doing weird shit to each other in the middle of the dance floor. Um, drugs. And I don't know if it was a prerequisite in the 80s, but it seems like every gay dude wears a jock strap. Yeah, it that's what? yeah. This uh, This movie came out in 1980. Um, which is really interesting to think about because one year later was basically the start of like the AIDS epidemic, right? Which is where like a lot of like intense homophobia started. Um, yeah, so apparently, apparently you only had AIDS if you were gay. Right? Well, back then, yeah, that's what a lot of people thought, and so it's it was sort of weird to kind of try and watch this movie sort of through that lens of like what if I was like around when this movie came out like right at that kind of turning point in almost like society where um like when this movie came out it was not hated I mean a lot of people criticized it but people were criticizing it because of how they were like portraying gay people and you know how they were you know sort of yeah just how they were portraying it and then i remember reading i don't remember where but there was an incident where like some guys like beat the hell out of like some gay guys and they were like yeah 
cruising did it. So that's why, like, yeah, like it, it's it's really fucked up. Sort of, I think how some people took this movie because watching this movie, it is hard to tell if this is pro gay or anti gay. Like, it really is kind of walking this line between like I can't tell yeah. if you're trying to be offensive or yeah. like pro. It pushes and pulls a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll see a shitload of homophobia, but then you'll, it'll be pulled back by like just like the, these fucking 10 minute club scenes. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, you see Al, Pac- Al Pacino's character is pretty sympathetic toward the gay community. Like, yeah. when, you know, when they when they get pulled into the police station. I mean, we'll get to that part later. Really. With the part where they get pulled into the police station and are my favorite. I don't I don't want to call him my favorite character in the movie, but it's fucking because it's awful. But uh, the guy, the cowboy hat man. <laughs> we'll we'll get to that part. Um. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, it's directed by William Friedkin. It was uh, it came out in 1980. What uh, we got like a budget and stuff. yeah, it and, uh, uh, its budget was 11 million. Um. And then when it came out, it made nineteen point eight million. So I mean, not you know, not bad. You know, pretty. You know, at least it made its money back. It made money, uh, yeah. So it's not like a you know, it's not really a failure, right? Um, and I mean, it you know, it's <clears throat> it's interesting, especially when you read about you know a lot of like the criticisms and and stuff that it got. Is I wonder how much of it was like I'm I'm wondering what like the demographic for this movie was when it came out like who were the people that went to see it like was it the gay community that went out to see it and they were like what the hell you're making us look like horrible scummy people or was it like other you know or was it like straight people that were going to see it and were like what the hell this is a movie that's like glorifying like gay people in that whole community and stuff it's it's like right. I want to know what the demographic kind of you know what the audience for this movie is because it again it seems like a very niche movie in like the craziest way. Yeah, we we open with "Welcome to uh, Welcome to Gay New York." Um, everyone looks like Travolta or Stallone. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I. We open. What, what the hell happened? Fucking. Oh yeah, we open with one of like they're at one of those underground clubs. You you're introduced to the uh, to the lifestyle they're living. Um. And you know they're having fun. There's dancing, drinking. We're introduced to the killer in the yeah, beginning of the movie. Yeah, we're introduced to the killer. He's got sunglasses. He's got sunglasses. He's got a hat. He's he's blending in, man. He's got the same shit everybody else has got on. Uh. He, he makes they make he him and another guy make eyes and uh they approach each other and they talk a little bit and i mean yo people move fast in the 80s this <laughs> like four words to each other and they're like yep back to my place bro mm-hmm. so so they get back there you know we get th- this guy busts his suitcase of fucking pleasure toys out and uh, they they get down to business and uh, it seems normal enough, right? And uh, then it's later, like, post. And uh, the guy wakes up and he's like, oh, what are you doing, man? Like, trying to trying to rob me. And the guy's like, no, nah, man, just look for a pack of cigarettes, you know. And, you know, he's over there talking to him. And he, uh, he starts saying some weird shit, starts getting tense. And he gets a knife out of the boot. I mean, prior to this, he's got the guy tied the fuck up. Like hog tied too yeah, on the bed, tied. yeah. And uh, he gets him some stabbings, and uh, <laughs> and uh, what he 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 says something like, "I did this for you," and he like he sings like a little nursery rhyme. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's it's weird especially in this scene because this i mean this pretty much is like the opening scene is we see our serial killer and we see him murder this guy hogtied to a bed 
with a with a knife and he just kind of stabs him a couple of times um and i will say i think this scene is effective in sort of setting up a tone because it really does feel like i mean watching the scene like i feel really bad for this guy that's like hog tied to the bed because it's like the at first um when the when the killer is kind of like rummaging through shit um he was like are you scared and the guy on the bed was like no and then like a little bit later he was like all right i'm getting scared now and then like and then he died you know and it's like every time he gets stabbed they like would close up on his face to see him just being like terrified like please don't do this um yeah really wild opening yeah it was yeah it gave it to you Mm -hmm. Um, Um, then we're then we're introduced to uh paul sorvino (laughs) uh the, the people that pop, like, we'll talk about it, but the people that pop up in this movie, like I didn't read so the cast, weird. so I'm watching this and I hadn't seen it in a while. So I remember Pacino, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And then to, to watch it again and see these people pop up and I'm not really in the know, I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. So Paul Sorvino, I mean, no, well, no, they go to the morgue first and the, the guy's like, I found an arm, you know? And he's like, maybe we can match it to that torso we found last week. And they have an argument because the guy's like, just fingerprint it. We'll find out who it is. And this this cop is like, doesn't matter, man. We don't have, we won't have shit. Yeah. Um, so they establish, I mean, right there in the beginning, you get a killing and you get you get this morgue scene to establish that somebody's killing gay people in New York City. Um. <clears throat> then uh, then we get Sorvino, and I, he sends for Al Pacino's character Burns um and talks to him starts asking him crazy shit doesn't even like there's no context to this he's just like hey man you you like to you like to suck dick like basically (laughs) he's asking him all these questions like like uh like questions questions like he would ask a gay guy or like i mean it was pretty vulgar i mean Mm -hmm. He's pretty aggressive about it. And dude's like, what the hell? He's like, what's this fucking all about, dude? And he's like, then just straight to, he's like, you want to go undercover? <laughs> and uh, he's like, he, he agrees. And uh, then he's, he's on his fucking way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he, not reluctantly, but he's kind of like, sure. Because Al Pacino is still pretty new to the force, I think, at this time. So like, he wants to be taken in as like a detective. And so uh, Sorvino's character is like, yeah, well, this is how you're going to be a detective. You got to go undercover and do this. Um, You know, no one knows. There's like designated drop spots or whatever for you to get paid. Um, And so we see Pacino kind of like, all right. And um, and that's when he kind of goes in and tries to figure out how to be gay essentially yeah there's a really yes there's a uh really cool there's a really funny and like uh, interesting scene where he goes into a store and there's like a hanging up is a bunch of uh uh handkerchiefs. yeah handkerchiefs. Like, yeah um and they're all different colors and he just turns to the clerk and he's like what what do those mean and this guy just starts rattling that shit off he's like yellow in the left you give water sports yellow in the right you receive fucking golden showers like blue is a blowjob red fucking gives a blowjob or some shit like all this crazy shit Mm -hmm. like he's like so what do you what do you want me to get you and he's like you know uh, i gotta go home and think about it (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's it's weird um yeah and then he and so he gets home and then that's where we meet his girlfriend, who is Karen Allen, who, for anyone that doesn't know, is the mom from the Sandlot. She was, uh, she was in Raiders of the Lost Ark also. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Sandlot, though. But, uh, well, for me, because it's just like, what are you doing in this? You are a mother. <laughs> like, like, why yeah, are you yeah. in this movie? Karen, um, Allen, Karen Allen's sexy in the 80s, bro. But... Yeah, like just okay. has this like innocent, innocent charm. Oh, yeah, and I mean her character is is 
I like her character because her character isn't her character is like supportive but worried about Al Pacino's character. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like she's never, you know, like don't do this. Why? Like she never really leaves him or anything. They I get like, into like a little bit of an argument, but they never, they never like break up. They never have like a big blowout or anything. I like that. Um, I like that they explore that. It's not just like a footnote in the movie where mm-hmm. you're like, okay, he has a girlfriend. See, like it's not like that. Yeah. They go. There is that subplot between them as as this is all is going on. Um, I can't describe much about, like, I don't feel like this could be any kind of educational for anybody, like, wanting to know anything realistic about the gay community, because what I learned is, uh, apparently it's just, if you're gay, it's one big sex party. Yeah, it's just one big orgy. And, and that's uh, really not it. So, I, I mean, I feel like I would have liked, uh, I would have liked some more depth to the I mean, you can't give depth to the whole, all the people, but at least have a couple characters because there are characters, but they just, they're in and out. Yeah. And, and so many of them are pretty one note are, I'm yeah. like, Hey, I'm this character. I'm gay and I'll fuck you if you want me to. Yeah. And that's, and that's basically their character. And then they're out and of the movie and it's like, no. My, one of my, one of my other favorite things was when we get down we get down towards the end and you know people that have sex like they don't really talk too much about it they just go into the habit these two dudes were fucking rattling off like slang and what what they do and don't do while they're taking their clothes off like what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Like, what but so weird uh so we also see this is another like another subplot on top of the subplot that did, didn't they didn't spend a lot of time on was the two cops in the cruiser that uh, oh that were to pick up the two hookers and basically fucking are like yo you want to go to jail or you want to suck this dick like, <laughs> <laughs> and that guy all is is also connected to that subplot um one of the hookers uh. He's like, yo, I need you to get these motherfuckers. Like, mm-hmm. this is fucked up. Like, and dudes basically brushes him off. But he's like, yo, I do a lot of stuff for you guys. Like, you can't just help me out. And they basically have these flimsy excuses, like no badge numbers. Like anybody pretends to be a cop and they shove them out the door. Yeah. But it's still, it's it's in and out of the movie, and it's still it's a thing. They they wrap it. They do with the subplots, like they wrap them up they wrap them up pretty like okay like they don't just have give you a subplot and then stray from it completely yeah um, so th- so you have that and then i just feel like most of this movie is al pacino going to some sleazy underground club where everybody's sweaty and naked yeah it is i mean after um after the the bandana handkerchief scene whatever is to me what i think is like the funniest for me what's the funniest part of the movie is when al pacino is lifting weights and he's just he just keeps shouting yes <laughs> <laughs> like he's just like yes 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 it's like bro montage, calm the fuck like, down you get the montage he's like putting eyeliner on and shit and like fucking getting a perm <laughs> It's so weird. Um, that, that was super weird. But like, I was just, I was just laughing so hard because I'm like, bro, yeah, you need to I chill. Can't believe Al Pacino got a montage of, like John Rambo. Like, <laughs> got it, but he got a montage of like a straight guy pretending to be gay. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is how I get ready. Look, I blend in. Um, but then yeah, the the majority of the movie after this point really is just Al Pacino kind of going to these like super sleazy clubs um and trying to find this killer um in between that he even like him meeting with uh Paul Sorvino's character and like him asking about uh, like what do you, he's like what do you got and basically like the fucking the police guys against him and shit like he's like uh you can't you you don't really got nothing blah blah blah. and like it's you can see after a little while like i see kind of see why they beat you in the head with these scenes Mm -hmm. of uh, 
it just seems like it's Al Pacino going to some crazy sex club. Um, I get why they beat you, kind of beat you in the head with these scenes because um, by a little bit after this point, Al Pacino is struggling like with his sanity. I think yeah. being exposed as as a polar opposite, being exposed to this community that he just probably ignored and didn't know much about, and the fact that he's undercover trying to find a killer all added up and his girlfriend thinks that he doesn't like her anymore yeah and i feel like it's pretty implied that she thinks he's gay yeah hold on one second yeah 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 my cat just keeps like fucking with shit in here so (laughs) um but yeah, no, there's there's like this weird internal struggle going on with Pacino's character where he um like he's like like he's talking to the his captain and he's just like I don't like I can't do this anymore. Like mm-hmm. this like this isn't this isn't good. Um and I think it's this thing of like one, I think Pacino is like every time he goes to you know, this club, it's, he seems to kind of fall deeper and deeper into kind of this mess where it's like the first time he went, um, it didn't really seem like much. I think like he just kind of came and went. Um, and then like next time, you know, he went in, he was starting to talk to people, starting to ask questions, um, starting to dance on like the dance floor with people and stuff like that. Yo, that scene was wild. That shit was so fucking weird, bro. He huffed that nap. He huffed that fucking handkerchief, and insanity fucking just swept across this this scene. What the fuck? Um, yeah, it was it was just weird. And at uh, <laughs> at forty nine minutes in. You see mm-hmm. a dude in a gimp suit. Oh yeah, yeah. In the club, just standing in the gimp suit. You see that guy two times total in the movie, and he's doing the exact same thing both times. He's just staring. Standing, I, yeah. Man likes so to watch. Weird. So hey, weird. You like to watch? Take that fucking handkerchief out of you. Yeah, yeah, oh, I remember that. that but uh, we get so we finally like police work finally starts getting done. Um, they, uh, they, he, he, first they kind of bumble it. So he, he thinks it's this one guy, he pins this one guy because he followed him out of a club one night by himself and was like, yo, I don't want no action, bro. And, uh, so he pins this guy, he seems, he's like, I feel like this is the guy, you know, let's, you know, let's set up a wire and all that and take him up to a fucking take him up to a fucking um to the hotel room they got it wired um they can't they can't get a fix on the sound so they're like fuck just go in mm-hmm. and go in. bring him in bring them both in you know you got to keep his uh keep his cover uh that's a, some really weird fucking police tactics dude like, it, it was not like yeah like it was like this isn't actually how cops work <laughs> like but it was um, it was very homophobic. Uh, they were the people were getting slapped. Uh, they were they got slapped. Up, all right, they were saying fucked up shit, and just out of nowhere, the door opens, and this large black dude wearing a cowboy hat and a jock trap and cowboy boots comes in just starts slapping people and then goes away and then later they're like hey we're gonna separate him we'll talk to him separate and they're at they're grilling this dude hard and they just have the fucking they don't like the answer to the question this cowboy this black cowboy walks in he fucking backhanded and forehanded this motherfucker and there was blood <laughs> leaking out of him everywhere uh, so then then fucking al bundy is like Hey man, you're fucked. You know we're gonna make you. We're gonna make you fill up a cup. Mm-hmm. It's like, and then we're gonna do the water test. And he's like, what the water test? What the hell is that? And he's like, 
this is the funniest thing I've ever heard as to tell if someone had a vasectomy or not. <laughs> We're going to put your balls in the water. See if they float. If they float, you're, if they float, you're good. If they don't, you're fucked. What? Is that real? It can't be real. I, I don't think so. I don't know. But it doesn't mean, oh, if they're full, they, if they're full, they float. Because, you know, your balls are full of semen. Like, what? No. I, lo- fuck? I love the part during that scene where they're, like, grilling the guy and the and the large black man in the cowboy hat, like, slaps him. The guy falls to the floor, and he just looks up, and he's just like, who is that guy? Yeah, and then he just walks everybody, out. Everybody watching the movie was is like, yes, who is that fucking guy? Why is this happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they never <laughs> answered. So, um, I, I don't know how this got put together, but after this, um, he somehow he gets information. I think they they just lead it to the first guy that got killed, who was like a professor at the mm-hmm. college. Well, yeah, they well they go to um, yeah, he was attached to the college, and the and the killer, I think, like works at the college or something like that, um, or goes to college, and yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, it's in the scene where we see the killer without the hat, without the glasses. Um, and he's talking to who I'm assuming is his, like, is his partner or his lover or whatever, um, which is played by, which is paid, played by William Russ, who, if you don't know, is the dad from fucking Boy Meets World. Yeah, like, he is. <laughs> and again, I'm like, what are you doing in this movie? Same thing with, like, as you mentioned, like, Al Bundy is in this movie. Ed, you know, fucking Ed O'Neill, and it's like, what are you people doing in this movie? Why are you in this? I don't understand how you're. You know 1980, what? Nineteen eighty, always... you guys are here. Nineteen nineties, you guys did something way different. You know, you know what? Other one always really bothers me is that David Caruso is in First Blood. Why can't I put a face to that name? I know that name. David Caruso, the guy from CSI that fucking takes the sunglasses off. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. David Caruso, he had that movie with fucking Kiss of Death or whatever with Nick Cage. Yeah. Yeah, that's another one that fucking, it's like weird to me that he's in there because he's, uh, he played like, I saw him on like NYPD Blue and fucking like, I don't watch CSI or whatever, but Mm -hmm. that, which is totally not rambo first blood but uh (laughs) so then what is it they they give him a page out of the yearbook and say that these is this is everyone that um that's a class from the the professor that got killed Mm -hmm. and he just starts looking he's looking at the pictures and then he sees the killer's picture and he's like yeah i saw that fucking guy in the club we fucking locked eyes like they show it or whatever mm-hmm. yeah they flash back to him seeing him in the club um he starts doing some shady police work like he's just breaking into fucking the dorms and fucking yeah going through that dude shit like <laughs> yeah he gotta broke into his dorm gotta catch that killer <laughs> um this is fun this part is fun yeah where it's like pacino is basically like tailing this guy like all over um and, and that's really cool because that kind of <clears throat> it is sort of this thing where it feels like the dynamic has kind of shifted where it's like throughout the entire movie you know the serial killer is like a predator almost and mm-hmm. then it's like it shifts and now Pacino now that he kind of knows who who he is is like basically like stalking him you know like almost like a predator like I'm just waiting for you to fuck up yep yep yeah this part is this whole rest is like this is basically almost the end of the movie but it's real tense even up to the well there's a part in between this that i remember before this happened he goes to an apartment and fucking james remar is there in his underwear yeah yo he fucked pacino up dude he gave him a business Mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah he they get in a big fight because in the um, like in like the, the beginning of the movie, Pacino meets um his neighbor from like down the hall or whatever, and yeah. you know they start talking or whatever, um, 
and they're good. And then, yeah, it's, you know, later in the movie, James Remar's character comes in and he's clearly, you know, this dude's boyfriend or something. Um, and yeah, and they get into like a huge ass fight where James Remar pretty much fucks him up. It's the most aggressive, like aggressive thing is they're like talking at the door, very like angry at each other. And James Remar's character is like, you know it's impolite to come to somebody's house at dinner time what? yeah <laughs> what yeah then they get in this fucking shoving match Pacino comes in like a badass and gets punked by Remar with the knife I dude everything dude Remar was in a scene in this movie and he fucking ate it up dude like that guy eats up scenery bro he's oh, yeah. I love that guy like he's not in a lot that I've seen but everything I've seen him in is fucking he's awesome yeah uh, so then I mean, we get this part that's fucking so great. Uh, what the fuck? Oh, he, <laughs> him, the, the killer leaves the house at night and he starts trailing him, and fucking he, he trails him into the park, and then they have then they have this conversation, dude. It just keeps getting more and more tense, dude. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Then basically they agree to do some business in the park after a after a little uh, back and forth. Um, so they get to this place, and this is what I'm talking about, dude. I know there's no way people are like taking in the middle of taking their clothes off, just spouting off what they do and don't do <laughs> right before they have sex. Like, mm-hmm. um, so this whole back and forth happens, and it's super tense because you know. You just feel like you're just waiting for that dude to jump, you know, because you know yeah. about to happen. So he jumps, but Pacino is quick on the draw, stabs him, stabs him right in the in the stomach, and they flash forward. They flash forward to the guy in the hospital, and uh, you're like, "Hey, telling him what he's looking at," and he's like, "He's like, hey man, just confess to all these murders and get you just eight years, you can, you can get right out." And the dude's like, yeah, fuck you, basically. He's like, I'll take it. And uh, we get Al Pacino gets promoted to detective. Um, and then he uh, just is creepily is in his ex-girlfriend's bathroom. Just like, hey, everything's cool now. <laughs> yeah. And she's fine with him. She's fine with him being there. What was this ending, dude? What well, the... Was- the ending was really weird because the ending was kind of like twofold where part of the ending was Pacino and his, you know, and his girlfriend now while he's like shaving his face, she puts on the jacket and the hat and the glasses. And it's like, I don't understand what the subtext of that was. And then, um, uh, his captains goes to a, um, uh, Pacino's James Remar's apartment, but Remar's gone. The guy who originally lived there is in the bathroom, stabbed to death. Yeah. Um, and then that's when Captain looks over and sees one of the cops sitting there, and he's like six precinct, and it's one of the guys who from one of the cops from the beginning of the movie who was basically like harassing the the prostitutes. Um, Wrapping up those subplots. Yeah, and that's and that's pretty much how the movie ended. Was that it? You kind of assume that James Remar, or at least I assume that James Remar killed the roommate out of like a lover's quarrel because that's even what they said that there was no yeah, signs think, of forced entry or anything. Was, I think he was pissed off. I think he thought that Al Pacino and his boyfriend were having sex. Mm-hmm. He was like super jealous. Yeah, um, the fucking. I think her putting on the stuff could have meant one of two things. One could have been like she thought that he might be gay, so she was trying to like like play into that to make to get him aroused and shit because of what happened prior. Maybe or she was just putting it on like, hey, you know, does it look sexy? And his immediate thought was remembering the trauma of killing a guy. Maybe or, well, because I mean, you don't even uh, see him. What that guy was doing to people, you know what I mean? Yeah, like I think I mean I guess that's how I take it. Is just like it's 
weird that she puts it on because it's like these are like killer like there's yeah. like blood on these clothes essentially you know yeah um so and then yeah and then it ends and it's it's a weird ending like i don't i don't know if i there's no like real rap yeah yeah it, it does it just kind of ends um so it's it's not that it's like unsatisfying but it's sort of like well like all right oh well, that was that yeah what like, did all uh, right. So let's get our ratings out of the way first. Uh, um, I mean, I still give this an eight out of ten. I, I really, for the most part, I really liked this movie. Um, is it a movie I'm gonna watch again anytime soon? Probably not. But it's, it's a tough one. what? It's a tough one. It, it's I, a tough one. But I mean, it's really good. It's filmed really well. The acting from everyone is is fucking top notch. Like stellar. stellar. Yeah, like everyone is just everyone is playing on a hundred in this movie, and so it's like I can't, you know, the like I don't really have much negatives in the way of how the movie was made. My only negatives for this movie are really like like socially what kind of this movie yeah. is. Um, but yeah, I mean, on, on a filming standpoint, it's like yeah, it was really good. I mean, even the music, like the music's not bad. The soundtrack is good. Music was banging, dude. You know, music can be a little gay sometimes, but it's still really good. You know, it was catchy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I give this one. I give this one a seven out of ten. Seven. Like it. Yeah, I give it a seven. Um, it was. I don't know. There's a lot of the same issues though. Like, um, socially was mm-hmm. like, I'm like, is this what people thought? This uh, these were gay people in the '80s. Like, this is crazy. I mean, aside from um. Aside from Karen Allen, there's like no other women in this movie. Yeah, there's not. There's not. She's like the only woman in this entire movie. And it's sort of like, all right, the underground of New York City is definitely not just teeming with village people. Like, yeah. <laughs> all the, the, the people, just the fans of the guy that dressed up like the cop. Though. Yeah, just him. <laughs> Yeah, they're not fans of the guy in the hard hat. They're not fans of anybody else. Just the guy in the police uniform. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, you know, it, it's a weird... It was a weird movie. There's a couple of parts where it's like, I laughed, and it's like, I don't think I was supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> like, right, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Um, product of its time, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, and again, it's like, I don't know... I really don't know kind of if if this is positive or negative, you know, against sort of, you know, that LGBT culture, you know? And so it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of weird because it's like, I want, like, I want to know if this movie was supposed to be offensive or not. (laughs) Yeah. Same. I don't, yeah. I don't know how to take it. (laughs) Like like it really kind of tiptoes that line, you know? Yeah. But it was good. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely also not a movie that I'm gonna go back and be like, man, I really gotta go back and rewatch that. Like, <laughs> I watched it a long time ago. I I know I liked it enough because I bought the Arrow. The Arrow put it out, and mm-hmm. I bought. It, so I knew I liked it enough for that, and I guess it was a good time to have a reviewing. Like, I feel like you could watch it again, but space spaced far apart. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I definitely think, I mean, I would definitely agree with you that Taxi Driver and Cruising are a pretty good double feature. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, yeah. Uh, is, was there any, did you, did you have any notes about anything interesting in this, about this movie, like behind the scenes or? Well, not so much behind the scenes. Um, I did want to just say one thing that at, um, I wrote it down <clears throat> at one hour and 17 minutes in the movie the killer sits down and just lays out a badass piano solo out of nowhere. Oh, like, yeah. Dude oh, sits right. down and is just rocking the fucking piano like it's nothing. And then just stands up and walks away. And I'm like, bro, like, what? Like, he, like, walked in. He walked into his dorm, picked up a book, looked at something else, and then just sat down one-handed and started banging out this piano fucking solo. Like mm-hmm. He was rocking it, too. Oh yeah. <laughs> um but that yeah, I mean 
but otherwise there's there's not much to kind of figure out. I mean, again, I think the fact that it was so divisive was like kind of what I was sort of looking at the most was like, man, people like either dug this movie or really hated this movie. There was no in between. I mean, it depends on how it makes you feel, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's all it's all yeah. on how you take it. Um, yeah, absolutely. But uh, in so I guess kind of switching gears here a little bit. Um, what would you? Let's start with what would you say are Pacino's worst roles? I. What was that? Oh, it was the word insomnia. I fucking did not like that. Really, with him and Robin Williams? Yeah, Robin Williams was fine. Just didn't think Al Pacino really brought much. Yeah, I mean Al Pacino was kind of kind of sleepwalking his way through that movie a little bit. I'll I'll definitely say that. Um, he's been in so much shit, dude. It's hard to. I mean, it's. It's got to be a lot of his later stuff. Yeah. If you're just doing a lot of direct to DVD type shit. Yeah. I mean, Jack and Jill obviously is is pretty terrible. It's a pretty bad role. Fucking Christ. Yeah. Oh. Pacino or whatever it was. <laughs> um, I don't. I can't really think of any of. I kind of just know what I like by him. I guess. I. Yeah. Um, hold on. Um, because I have because I have a movie in mind that I'm like I know that I didn't really like this movie. Um, uh. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Sorry for the dead air right there to anyone know. that was listening. <laughs> you want you want a hot take? You want a hot take? Hmm. <laughs> I think one of his worst movies is Scarface. Really? <laughs> wow. Okay. That's interesting. So, I mean, there is a movie that is one of my favorites where he's over the top, but this is like ridiculous. Scarface is ridiculous. Do I own it? I own the 4K. So I, do I, I like yeah. The movie. I like the movie. His performance, I mean, he's in almost 100% of the movie, but his performance, I don't know, doesn't really, it's just, it, it feels very hokey. Like, I know what he's trying to be, and it feels very hokey. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a little too like bombastic of a character, you know. Like he's maybe supposed to be right here, and he's like way the fuck up here with it at yeah. all times. Like at yeah. all times. But I mean, maybe it was the script. I don't know. Maybe that's how he took it. Maybe that was the direction. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's, yeah. that's how I feel. I I I really like that movie. I have no problem with the movie. It's just like I don't. You could say I don't make any sense because I'm like no. I, no, I mean I agree. I, I hate the guy's performance that's in most of the movie. <laughs> I mean, I don't hate the performance, but I can definitely say that, like, yeah, it's a little cartoony, especially, like, basically when he just, like, throws a bunch of coke in his face and then is like, all right, you want to play rough? Like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So what are, your, what are your favorites? What are your favorites? Um, well, I mean, Devil's Advocate. <laughs> yeah, that's, is, that's one of them. Yeah, I love that. that. Um, it, a lot of people, I think, will, I, I think because of how it it won an Oscar, and people will kind of talk down because a different movie should have won an Oscar, but Scent of a Woman is really good. Like his, I mean, his monologue in the courtroom scene is amazing. Like. When he's just like, I'm out of order. Like this whole courtroom's out of order. Like, oh my god, such a good scene. Yeah, you know, uh, I've never seen that movie. It's honestly even just just go on YouTube and just look up the 
scent of a woman like Al Pacino like scene, and it'll be the first one that pops up. Where yeah. it's just like his the monologue that he gives is amazing. Um you know, where, you know, he was like, you know, if I was a younger man, I'd do this, but, you know, I'm too old and I'm too fucking blind. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, oh my God, it's so good. Um, Trying to think, I mean, obviously Godfather, that's just, oh yeah, obviously. I like, um, um, I like Donnie Brasco. That's a good one. Donnie Brasco is a great movie. He does. I think he does a good job in that. It's one of my favorite Johnny Depp movies too. Mainly because yeah. Johnny Depp is playing so against type, which I fucking love. <laughs> um, Especially during that time, too, because he was basically like, I mean, I don't know. He was sort of like, he was like that uh, teen teen bad boy guy. And he was like kind of cast in the same role. Yeah, like I think like either, it was I think around Donny Brasco was when he was doing like Chocola and like From Hell and like stuff like that. From Hell is a really cool movie. I like that one. Yeah. Um, oh, what the fuck? What the hell else? Did, oh, that was, I mean, now he's like Tim Burton's guy, or he's Captain Jack Sparrow or whatever. So he's not going to be Captain Jack Sparrow in the new Pirates movie. Well, that's good for him. Yeah, well, I think he's 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 not blacklisted right now but he's because of the whole amber heard situation they're both kind of in like weird situations they put him in limbo he's being beaten yeah pretty much yeah he didn't do anything no but i mean they they put him yeah he's basically in like hollywood limbo right now yeah well sucks to be her because she was in fucking the uh, aquaman she was she was busting out and, well she's uh, gonna be in the new aquaman too Ugh. Never mind. I actually like that well, man. Not gonna lie. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, so, um, if this is something that I was trying to think of, like if I could think of any director that I'd like to see Pacino work with. Um, personally, I'd like to see him work with uh. Ari Aster. Yeah, you know what I, I was, was really interested. I was just trying to think of that dude's name. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. yeah. What if, what if he got a role with like Robert Eggers, like in the vein of Willem Dafoe's character, so sort of made him like do something crazy like that. I mean, it would depend on the role, but like, I, I would love that. It. I mean. Like, I want to see Pacino sort of be, like, Pacino's career, you know, when he started, he was kind of a quiet character in in some of his movies. I mean, even in, like, the first Godfather movie, Serpico, he's not, like, super loud. Cruising, he's not crazy loud. But then, you know, it's like, after Scarface, he basically is, like, everything's at an 11 now you know with movies even like uh like any given sunday um you know devil's dude, advocate that's such, a, dude, that's such a terrible movie but i love it so much any given sunday i love that yeah. movie i love it's that movie good. it's not fucking good by any means but it's so awesome yeah i i, I do i do like that dude i like i, I don't know why I think, and the reason I even wanted to watch it, because I was like, oh, this has the same kind of look as, like, Last Boy Scout. And I fucking love Last Boy Scout. It involves football. Like, mm-hmm. I think anything, any movie that shows me, like, is about football or baseball, but it's, like, sort of behind the scenes a little bit, like, I'll watch it. I'm interested. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I like all those fucking baseball movies. I like The Natural, fucking Field of Dreams. I like... The comedy's fucking major league, all that shit, Bull Durham. I don't know why, just love it. Um, I'd like, I'd like to see him work. I'd like, I'd like it to be a comedy, and I'd like, uh, what's that guy's name? Taika Waititi. Oh, Taika Waititi. Yeah. I'd like to see him into like a comedy directed by that guy. That would be good. I think, yeah. I think he would do. A good job with that. I think Taika Waititi would make him kind of like weird and like, you know, kind of like a spontaneous sort of strange character. Um, yeah. 
it'd be funny to see him in a uh, uh, Wes Anderson movie. I think. Yeah, that would be that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think that would be good. Um, <laughs> great. I'd like to see him in a in in like an actual horror movie, not Devil's Advocate horror, like a real actual like scary movie. Um, whether he's the bad guy, whether he's the good guy, whether he's just a guy, it doesn't matter. Like, I want to see him in like a Friday the Thirteenth type of movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was he gonna be Crazy Ralph though? holy shit if they remade friday the 13th and he was just like you're all doomed but like doing it in like his like doing it in like his like devil's advocate voice where like he's like instead of being like he'd pop out and he'd be like -ah! (laughs) i'm a fan of man yeah like (laughs) you're all doomed (laughs) oh my god that would be pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, I would love to just see him play like the. I'd love to just see him play the crazy guy, but like comically crazy. crazy. Not. They not, could make him like the fucking. They could make him like the sheriff or something. Yeah, like because I think you know, like when I watch The Irishman, I'm just like, dude, you're boring in this. I mean, everyone's kind of boring in that movie, but like. Him especially because it's like Pacino's playing Jimmy Hoffa in that movie. Like he should be the most memorable part of it. To me, the most memorable part of the Irishman is Joe Pesci. And that's just because he's so different. It's because he's Joe Pesci, man. Yeah. Nobody fucks with Joe. But I mean Joe Pesci came out of retirement for that movie, you know? Yeah, and it sucked. Yeah, I don't want to. I I don't want to admit that it sucked because it's like it's Scorsese and it's the, all these legends. What a it's down. Pesci, man. It's boring. What the hell is happening? Here we go. Um, trying to think. Any uh, any final thoughts, man? Final thoughts. Final thoughts. I like this movie. I feel like we've been on a pretty hot streak of movies that we liked. We had a uh, we had a rough start, <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, it's all the it's all part of the experience. Yeah. Um, so next week we're shifting gears again, and we're going into uh, comedy. And our first comedy review is going to be Dodgeball. Hell yeah! Oh, I'm fucking stoked for this movie, dude. I love Dodgeball. I think it is so underrated. It's very much a source for me for um, uh, uh, Ben Stiller quotes. I <laughs> yeah. like this movie very much. I really, really, really like this one. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to have a special guest, too. Mm-hmm. You're going to have and, a real special guest. So And, uh, like, some some real some real life news, you know? Well, I think so you're going to have him on. We're, we're going to have him on, so you're going to talk about... Uh, talk about your thing right yeah yeah we're gonna talk about something special i uh you know i'm making i'm making big moves for 2022 man i'm I'm trying to manifest some pretty big things for next year so oh yeah all right so uh that was episode 10 of the film section <laughs> don't fuck it up this time <laughs> i didn't fuck it up this time. <laughs> uh, we're gonna see you next week episode 11 dodgeball uh like like this video view this video Come to our Twitter page is uh, twitter.com slash the film section. Follow us, leave questions, comments, anything. Literally you know I mean? anything. anything. Doesn't even matter. I'd like to get to a point where we do like a little bit of a QA or something. Like we answer questions on the cast. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. So, people, you got a job to do. Um, we'll see you next week. <laughs>